uh, then uh, our next uh, speaker will be uh, Dr. Hussein uh, Mohammed, Pattern Recognition Approaches for Handwriting Style Analysis. Uh, he uh, received his bachelor degree in computer and communication engineering from the Arab International University in Damascus in 2010, and has worked among others with the uh, UNHCR in Damascus. He has been awarded the full scholarship from Erasmus Mundus, and received his master's degrees in informatics engineering from the University of Algarve, Algarve in Portugal in 2014. Uh, also there obtaining his uh, doctoral degree in computer science, uh, sorry, uh, and obtained his doctoral degree in computer science from Hamburg University after that in the computational analysis of handwriting styles. Since July, 2019, he is the principal investigator and the manager of the project Pattern recognition in 2D data from digitized images and advanced acquisition techniques within the cluster of excellence, understanding written artifacts in Hamburg University. So uh, I would invite uh, Hussein Mohammed to uh, share his uh, screen. Thank you for the nice introduction and thank you for inviting me here. I want to make sure first if you can hear me clearly. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, but your slides are uh, in, in full view, including the side panel. I don't know whether this is your intention. Yeah, I just started, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. So, uh, since you already introduced me, there is no point. But here in this talk, I wanted to share with you some of the approaches uh, that had been developed in the center for in order to support the process of analyzing handwriting styles. Uh, and I'm not intending to go deeply in these approaches, but just to give an idea that such approaches exist. Uh, but before starting with the approaches, I wanted just to highlight how difficult it could be, how challenging it could be working with digitized images. And I noticed that in the first session, you covered it well, so, and from my point of view regarding the data that I had to work with in center, I noticed that the most challenging parts are the quality of the images, of course, and also the availability of training and annotation. And here I mention also the quality of the annotation because sometimes the annotation is, is a matter of opinion. It's not really guaranteed or grounded truth, let's say. So these are some examples of uh, projects in the center. Uh, you can see how diverse they could be uh, in terms, not only in, in terms of the script, in terms of the handwriting, but also in, the, in terms of the writing support itself. And also the questions behind the analysis of handwriting, because sometimes the question can lead you to different solutions. Uh, nevertheless, we wanted to, uh, my colleague from uh, Project DCRIBE, Dr. Isabella Marthoth, uh, and I wanted to contribute by showing the community of computer science how challenging it could be because some of them could be not aware or fully aware at least of the extent of difficulties faced when you are dealing with manuscript images. This is, uh, well, we try to demonstrate some real research question. Uh, explaining what is the research question and opening the door for the invention of our colleagues from computer science. Uh, we try to embed uh, the types of difficulties we typically face, like the resolution, the sizes, the, the background, and as you can see. The first approach I wanted to, to mention here is a script independent learning free my, uh, writer identification. And here I really use the writer identification word. I prefer to say handwriting style analysis because of the reasons that you all mentioned in the first session. Uh, I believe that, well, identifying a style or a scribe could go well beyond the ability of simple numbers or probability but needs the schoolers to incorporate much more or wider knowledge about the manuscript itself, about the maybe even the culture surrounding the manuscript in order to reach a conclusion whether this is a describe that you are looking for or not. But nevertheless, some quantitative measurements could be 
a very useful supporting information for the schoolers. And although the, 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 the method that we developed could be used for different scenarios, nevertheless, the basic idea is simple. Is you have a piece of unknown style uh, and you detect some, some visual features and using some probabilistic classifier, you reach some uh, results and use, well, we presented these results in a way so that it could be as intuitive as possible which can be used, as I may just mentioned, as a supporting evidence, supporting information for the schoolers who has the full responsibility actually to use it properly or to, con or to interpret it based on other evidences from their knowledge. Uh, in general, the approaches that we develop, uh, we try to implement as a software tool. Uh, we package it in a way so that it can be accessible by our colleagues in the center and by other people as well outside the center. So this is an example. This is also, this also had been implemented as a software tool, which is freely available in this link that you can see. Also, you can see other software there. Um, yeah, in general, it could be used for different scenarios, as I mentioned, but the idea is to give some supporting information no more. Another approach that we developed is to detect visual patterns. Although it could seem that it's not really relevant but, uh, to handwriting analysis, but actually the, the original motivation behind developing this method was working with one of our colleagues in the center who has only two examples of certain invocation, which is written in, uh, as, as he calls it, squared style in millions of, of palm leaves. He and his colleague uh, tried to find some other examples and going through thousands of them, he found only two. And they have about 3 million. So we tried to develop some method. That is, that is the reason why we, we try to, to make a method that is training free and can cope with degradation in manuscripts to some degree. Then we end up with, with pretty much good performance method. The training free is able to work with very small set of samples, could be even one. And of course, this is from different data sets <laughs> because of the copyrights, but uh, nevertheless. So we implemented it. It's in the process of publication and we already packaged it, implemented as a software tool so that other people can test it, can see whether it can help them or not. This is an example, a snapshot from, I think, the final page, which is the results page, where you can see your pattern that you were searching for and the results. Of course, people who works with, with pattern detection, object detection, or even word spotting can see that the main question here is how to select the threshold. And here we, we, we found a simple solution. We just leave it to visual inspection by schoolers. We show them some of the results, uh, starting from the best to the worst, and users can uh, select visually which threshold could be meaningful for them or not. Uh, I'm sorry for the blurring, but again, it's copyright. It's not uh, published yet. Uh, but still, I think you can see the idea. Uh, in other cases, you cannot really have reliable visual features, let's say. You cannot extract reliable visual features, even in, if, if some tablets are well preserved in good condition, you can do some, uh, use some equipments in order to have a 3D modeling of them, which is available in the center, but nevertheless, it wouldn't be sufficient. In most of the cases, it is degraded. Therefore, some schoolers in the center uh, build well, kind of table that summarize the frequency of occurrences of certain styles. So each sign existing in the tablets could be written in a certain style. Uh, then they write down how many times this way of writing this sign occurs in this tablet. Uh, we try to help by develop some automatic pattern analysis method algorithm in order to automatically analyze these tables. This is a work under progress because we want to check it. We want to validate the results. 
uh, of course, this shave is just representing the statistical information, but there are different kinds of statistical information that you can infer from that. Nevertheless, the idea is actually to help them getting some quantitative measurements in order to help them in the process of identifying the scribes of the tablets. Another example is where uh, you know that the ink or the composition of the ink can help, can give you a lead of the origin, the temporal information, the geographical information, or maybe the, the writer himself. So in that case, uh, we, the, we, we could use such a machine like XRF machine, uh, which could produce some spectral intensities which reflects, approximates the intensities of the elements existing in the ink and thus the, the ingredients used in the ink. Now, manually analyzing these tables could take long times, could be weeks, and it could be susceptible to human errors, as any of us can do, working with a lot of tables. So we are trying to help by producing some automatic algorithm to analyze these tables to generate some, uh, well, uh, scatter blocks which could help cluster these measurements taken from manuscripts. And hopefully, in the future versions, we can reach a level where we can support in, in giving some suggestive clusters for these measurements so that experts can dig into more details in them. Finally, I wanted to invite you to the International Workshop of Computational Biography that we will held actually, the, 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 we will organize uh, Isabella, uh, Dr. Isabella and I will organize alongside the IGDAR, workshop, uh, IGDAR conference in Switzerland next year. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Hussein. There is uh, room for questions. Um, to get things uh, started, I could maybe ask you a question about spectral analysis already, because um, in fact, what I saw from your table is that it is already filled in uh, with the with the elements, uh, the metallic elements, uh, basically, uh, which means that there already has been some pre-processing done, uh, let's say, between the uh, the, uh, the sensor uh, equipment and this this table, and. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> how, how stable are, are those results? There is apparently already some black box between uh, the measurement, the spectral uh, measurement and the, this table. Uh, the, first of all, I'm not an expert in this field. This is very important to mention. Uh, nevertheless, uh, well, I worked, I collaborated directly with Sebastian Bosch, which is the manager of our analytics uh, lab. Uh, Nevertheless, from our discussion, I remember mentioning that, yes, of course, you are right. Uh, it's, there is a software actually used which can uh, read the raw data from the machine and prepare it in a way, uh, use some, uh, some mathematics, actually, some sampling in order to create these numbers, these tables. Nevertheless, this is not enough to for them to reach the final conclusion. They still need to prepare the tables, need to normalize them, to filter them, to especially to normalize them with respect to certain elements. So after the discussion with them, they would explain exactly what they do manually and what can be automated then. But yes, of course, this is not a raw data. <laughs> this is done, fair this table is done by software come with machine yes so which means that the uh, the systematics of of doing the measurements needs to be uh, uh clear because otherwise you get in trouble with your let's say your uh your fingerprint uh, stage you're right of course that's why we didn't reach this stage yet <laughs> we need a lot of discussion okay thank you thank you uh other any other questions? Maybe also concerning the software packages. Oh, 
Maybe you can say something about that. Oh yeah, on, sure, sure. On what, on what systems do they run? Yeah. Uh, well, I think I kind of switched the sharing to the. But well, anyway, so um, let's see if I can share the. Uh, yep, uh, I can. I think that you can see now the website. Yep. So basically, this is the website of the uh, workshop that we are organizing. Um, now, the share screen bar is blocking everything, so <laughs> it's a bit added. Uh, yeah. So here, if you go to the CSMC to the publication section, you go to the software. You can see some of the software that we published already. Of course, this is. A work, I mean, this is continuously updated. Uh, whenever there is a new feature or there is a bug reported, we update the versions. When, whenever there is a new software available, we upload it to the same site. Uh, but generally, so far, all the software developed, uh, are developed for Windows. Uh, it's supposed to work uh, up to Windows 7. It does not matter whether it is 64 or it is 30, well, 86 systems, it should be totally independent of any library because it's standalone application. Although you see that the software uses your browser, nevertheless, it's totally offline. And the main reason is obvious for most of you, which is just the you don't, many people don't does not want to upload their data to the cloud. So well, of okay. course, sometimes it makes sense, but since we are working with, with many special cases in the center, we try to make it an offline version. So you download the software. It does not need to download any additional libraries along with okay. them. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So in the meantime, some questions uh, uh, popped in. Uh, for instance, uh, Jonathan Bendov had a question. So you can unmute your microphone. Yes. Thank you. This and this is wonderful work and absolutely wonderful that you uploaded it, which is really great. Yes, oh, this is. Uh, but my question is, uh, usually when when I would I'm trying to think of myself or my team, and we when we would need handwriting analysis, we would really need it for the very close cases. You know, the very small, minor, fine print of differences. So I ask about your system of handwriting analysis, which as if I understood well. It has, does not even recognize the actual characters, but rather uses their structural features. So how good would it be for, for the small, small differences between you know, two scribes with something that is, you know, we're not really sure if it's two scribes or one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to make sure whether you can see now these slides. Yes, I do. OK. So. Uh, as as uh, our speakers already mentioned in the first session, uh, we are not looking for perfect tools. We want to start it. Our motivation is to try to retrieve, to recall as many occurrences of certain pattern as possible, which means that there could be, for example, in our experiment, we retrieved about 65 instances. There could be more. There could be 100. We don't know. But the idea was to retrieve as much as possible with less effort by humans as possible. And in general, talking about 3 million images instead of spending three, three years maybe or more, you spend almost two days in order to do so. So yes, there could be certain variations in the, in the instances which prevents you from detecting it. But in general, if you upload three, four different samples of the instance of this pattern, you could help the method incorporating wide variety of features that could be found in the occurrences. In general, you see here the example. This is an actual example. It could detect letters, but a general rule of thumb, the more complex the pattern is, the more unique it is, which means the easier it is to detect it. So if you are looking for, let's say, a simple letter like R in Arabic, uh, people 
who knows Arabic knows that they could find such thing in so many different letters or, or part of letter noon. You can find it in like 10 places in different letters. So the simpler the, the pattern you are looking for, of course, the more it will be overlapped with other possible patterns. Okay. Thank you. Then there is a question by Drew Longacre. Uh, if there is time, I was wondering if you could explain a bit more about your work on writer ID and the GRK papyri data set. So maybe Drew, you can unmute your uh, microphone. Yeah, um, thank you so much. It was really nice to see your work. Um, you. Just a bit selfish note, but our project here, we're focusing on this question of writer identification. And I know you and Isabel have been working on that. I just wondering uh, if you wanted to explain briefly how that work has gone and your recent publication of the, the data set. I think that uh, in terms of the source of this data set, the images used, the origin of the images, how, and the most important thing, how we could guarantee that the grounded truth is a grounded truth, which is really an important issue. I think uh, Dr. Isabella is much better person to explain, and she will have a, a talk after me. So I think she's well, much well prepared. From my part of the view, I try to, ex well, I try to expose the vulnerability of the methods. For example, I developed this method. I think you can still see the slides. I developed this method, and I was happy about it. Especially, it was done during my PhD. It was a long time ago. And as any person, I was happy about it. But I wanted to break it in order to see the limit. It, it achieved the state of the art results and state of in, in, in data sets. Nevertheless, when I tested it on this data set, which we created them ourselves, it just broke. The identification rate was really bad. And I wanted to share that with the community. So from the computer science aspect, I can tell you that I, I try to expose all the vulnerabilities in my own method, which happens to be in many other computational methods, like the lack of training data. I gave like two examples, which, which is all what we had really. In terms of the usage or the mechanism of the method, if you are asking for uh, we could get into some details. I use some naive, well, the, the basis of our probabilistic approach is naive bias nearest neighbor, but we applied some modifications for that. We applied some filtering for the key points. Nevertheless, an example was, it should be, I mean, I, can, I think I can see now the example. An example of that was the collaboration with uh, Professor Zeidenstick. He, he already wrote, uh, a publication about comparing between different Arabic uh, audience certificates. And he has these manuscripts. He has he identified 13 different paragraphs and he started to analyze who is similar to what. We wanted to test our method and we compared it with his result. And to our surprise and his surprise, the, it's exactly the same even in terms of the confidence, how much he was confident that this paragraph is similar to that. Of course, he depends on maybe 10 features. We depend on 20,000 features, but uh, yeah, I, of course, I think the computational power, the computations that we do is much more stupid than naive if we compare to the computation in our brain, but we can do it a lot. <laughs> so we can have a statistical idea. Uh, I think the publication will appear this week in Manuscript Cultures Journal. Uh, the 15th edition. You can read the details of, of the method, how it works, how it could be compared, how much we can visualize what we detect so that schoolers, as, as uh, our colleague, Professor Lambert said, I mean, we give confidence to them, we give some trust, we show them what we detect, we explain to them why it is meaningful for computational methods. So it's all explained in this journal paper. In general, you can see it could be a supporting information to validate your idea. It could be an indication if you search in a hundred image or thousand, you can see whether you have similar handwritings among these data sets. Then it's the schooler's responsibility to have a deeper look and to investigate. Okay, thank you. 
Then there is a question by Stephen uh, White, and uh, uh, I invite you to unmute your microphone and uh, ask your question. And the question is in the pattern spotting, how much variance can the system match with? You are asking about, uh, well, I do know that this equation computationally makes sense, but in reality, it really depends on how much, for example, the writing support effects. Although we try to remove it away by doing some pre-processing, but you are talking about how much variance, if you look at the, how the result appears in the software that we implemented, for example, although it's only an implementation, you can see that it is a continuous thing. You can see the exact match, the a bit variant match, and so forth, until you get, for example, for three pages in this case, you get about 400 detections. So the 400th one has a huge variance, but it wouldn't be considered by schoolers. So, so if you put the, have you actually put the uh, uh, variance into a hyperparameter that the user can adjust? I didn't use deep learning methods. So I didn't, I, well, in terms you of terminology, I didn't use math. hyperparameters, but uh, I, I tried to calculate flex. Well, in general, the problem is that this work is not published, so I don't know how deep I can go. It's in the publication process, but okay, I would okay. say that I tried to create some elastic matching in a way to permit the missing features. So if you have occluded, for example, part of the pattern, you have enough flexibility to, to tolerate that. Although you will analyze it, you will tolerate it. You will st still detect the location of this occurrence, uh, well, occurrence or, or instance of the, of the pattern. So it tolerates certain amount of differences in terms of finding the feature or not, the center of the feature, how far it is from the actual one. The actual method, I apologize for mentioning because it's in the publication process. I think I'm not allowed. But uh, again, as an end user result, you will have a continuous spectrum of detections and you will see the first detections. Then you will select whether you can see more or you want to see more and it makes sense visually or not. By simple click, you can get it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Come. Yes, so I, I would like uh, to thank uh, Usain uh, for his uh, very clear uh, and uh, broad uh, uh, presentation. Thank you.